Many have called Forspoken one of the worst games of 2023. It has boring gameplay, a bad story, and dialogue so terrible that it's become infamous at this point. Did I just do that? Well, definitely with my assistance. I did not just do that. We did. I just move shit with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just move shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just move shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> Yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. Now you're just being ridiculous. Forspoken was such a failure that the studio behind it, Luminous Productions, was shut down and merged into Square Enix. So, you guys know me. When I see everyone saying, this game is terrible, stay away, don't play it, I have to know why. <laughs> I need to know what makes this game so terrible. So today, we're going to check out Forspoken, now that it's been over a year since its release and all the noise has died down. Let's go through it together and decide if it's as bad as everyone said it was. It's what I would say if I wanted to pretend like this game was good for the entire video, but I can't do it. <laughs> Spoiler alert, this game is bad. I'm really not sure what the Forspoken team was thinking. <laughs> so let's just start off by talking about the premise of the game. You play as Frey a young girl with a major stealing problem and who has no family, just trying to survive in the modern world. Suddenly, she gets a set guide to the magical world of Athia. She works with her trusty cuff that gives her magical powers to save the world from the evils that plague it. So in terms of gameplay, you're going to spend a lot of time running around this open world fighting enemies. Theoretically, it should be really fun to explore and fight in a magical world like this, but Forspoken somehow just makes it horribly boring. The world doesn't look bad, there's just nothing in it. It's not fun to explore a barren terrain, a barren terrain, a barren city, and you guessed it, a barren terrain. And the combat is also really boring. All you do is stand there and press the same button over and over again to cast spells at the enemies. That's it. That's the entire combat system. You don't get any weapons, just this magic attack. You can charge it up, so I guess there's that. And you do unlock different types of magic that you can swap between, but that doesn't happen until you're halfway through the game, and by that point you've already lost a bunch of your players, because it turns out standing in one place while your character goes like this isn't very entertaining. And even when you do unlock that other magic, you're still just spamming that same button. About the only fun bit of gameplay is that Frey can use magic to parkour all over the place, but that isn't enough to make this an enjoyable game. Even if the gameplay was enjoyable, it'd be hard to get into it considering the fact that tutorials pop up every two seconds and most of them are redundant and pointless. Even at the end of the game, you're still getting these tutorials. The main character has this whole transformation and then they feel the need to give you a tutorial about how she had a transformation so she's stronger now. Yeah, thanks. I uh, think I could have figured that one out on my own, but okay. The gameplay isn't great, but I'm willing to forgive it if you give me an amazing story with some interesting characters. But of course, Forspoken does not have that either. So all of the side characters are pretty one-dimensional and not very captivating. Then there's your talking magical Cuff. I can tell that they wanted Cuff to be a funny character, but he's just not. I know what a self is. Really? Not really. And then we're left with Frey, the main character. Honestly, she might be the worst thing about Forspoken. She is so beyond unlikable. I mean, we already know that she has terrible dialogue, which is unforgivable on its own. Did I just do that? But beyond that, she is downright mean to everyone. Try to blend in with the crowd. I could blend in a whole lot better if you shut the fuck up. I don't care what happens to Athia. If it's saved or if it burns, I don't give a shit because this place is not my home. I don't think you comprehend the gravity of your situation. I've gotten myself out of much tougher scrapes than this, thank you very much, so why don't you shut your shiny mouth and let me do the talking? She swears every five seconds because, I don't know, I guess that's cool and edgy. Put your pointy stick away, asshole. No shit. Don't touch me, asshole. Hey, the fuck you calling monster? And she's beyond selfish and doesn't even want to be helping the people of Athia in the first place. If the main character doesn't care about saving Athia, then why should I? So now we're just left with the story, which... <laughs> it feels like it was written by a middle schooler. And listen, I thought that I was destined to be an author when I was in middle school, so I can attest to this. I know middle school writing very well. So let's go ahead and dive into the plot of Forspoken so you could really understand what I mean. The story begins with our main character Frey in court. She's been caught stealing for the billionth time. The judge decides to let her off with just some community service, but this is her last chance. Next time she steals, she's in for it. 
Frey heads home, but is attacked by some gang members that she's working for. I guess she was supposed to steal a car for them, but she got caught, and the car was impounded. The gang doesn't care, though, and wants her to get the car. So Frey does some sick moves to escape. Here's some collateral. <sighs> 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 You know, I get the feeling that wouldn't work quite so well in real life. She runs away, and the gang members chase her, and one of them just says the same line repeatedly. Damn it, Frey! Damn it, Frey! Damn it, Frey! Frey is able to escape and makes it back to her place. She has a cat named Homer, and she's finally made enough for the two of them to leave the city and start fresh somewhere else. She goes to bed, but is woken up in the middle of the night to her place on fire, thanks to the gang members. The bag she has filled with all of her money is right next to her, but when you try to pick it up, she says, Gotta find Homer first. That's right. She will not pick up the bag of money that is right next to her and then go find her cat. This girl is an idiot. She goes and grabs her cat, and by this point, her room is engulfed in flames, so she lost all of her money. She escapes and is forced to live on the street for a few days. You know how you could have avoided this situation? By taking two seconds to pick up the money bag and throw it around your shoulder. Gotta find Homer first. Frey decides to give Homer to the judge from the start, and she's like, oh yeah, sure, I'll take your cat. She decides that she's going to do everything she can to get her life back on track. That is, until she sees a shiny golden cuff in a nearby window. Woo! Let's go right back to our old ways and steal it! When she picks the cuff up, she's suddenly teleported to the magical world of Athia. There, she discovers that not only can the cuff talk, but it's also stuck to her arm. It leads her out of the building she's in to try and find safety, but they're attacked by a creature. This is when she discovers that Cuff has powers, and she's able to use him to fight. And this is also when the infamous dialogue happens. Did I just do that? So Cuff is your travel companion throughout the game. He's always with you, provides support, and is the reason Frey is able to use magic powers. Now, I can see what they were going for with this dynamic. Cuff and Frey are always talking to each other. They want you to feel like they're buddies who have witty banter, and Cuff is always there for her. Unfortunately, they kind of failed miserably at this. The relationship between these two is not entertaining at all. The entire game, Frey is just mean to Cuff for no reason. Try to blend in with the crowd. I could blend in a whole lot better if you shut the fuck up. He'll try to help her, and she just makes one of her classic snarky comments at him. You absorbed Sila's energy. It restored your strength. Healed you. No shit. I was there. When they're not arguing, they try to make them have a humorous back and forth, but it just falls flat. An apple a day. We'll keep Frey's hunger at bay. Such a poet. Like, this dialogue just does nothing for me. I actually picked up on French pretty quickly when I was in school. Is that another Earth language? Oui, monsieur. That's a yes, I take it? If you want an example of this kind of relationship done well, please play one of my all-time favorite games, Near Replicant. The main character, Near, and his magical talking book counterpart, Grimoire Vice, have some of the best interactions ever. He seems completely ignorant of the pain he has caused. It's deplorable. I love it when you sound like a grumpy old man, Vice. Perhaps I only sound that way because I have existed since time immemorial. How old are you anyway? Hmm. You know, I'm not exactly sure. They say memory loss is a sign of old age. Well, it's still preferable to being a deplorable liar like that son. I never get sick of their back and forth because it's just so well written. You're really quiet, Vice. The fish will be scared away otherwise, no? Yeah, but it's just weird. May I talk freely then? No. Then what would you have me do? You're scaring him away! Damn. This is just so much better, okay? God, having sand in your clothes is the worst. It makes one want to enjoy a bath for certain. Vice, can you even take baths? Yes. Oh, okay then. When I hear Frey and Cuff interact, I'm like, oh god, they're talking again. Okay, moving on. Frey gets attacked by a dragon. She's unable to defeat it, so it picks her up and carries her away. Then it just drops her, and she lands in front of the city of Sepal. She enters the city in hopes of the people there helping her, but instead, they take her into custody. Which, I mean, that's fair. This strange girl in weird clothing you've never seen before shows up out of nowhere. Not only that, but there's something called the break. I don't know how to describe to you what the break is, 
So I'm just going to read the definition of it from the Forspoken Wiki. The break is a devastating miasma in Athia that relentlessly corrupts everything it touches. Basically, it's this stuff that exists outside of the cities, and if you touch it, you pretty much turn into a zombie. So the people of Sapal are a little afraid of the strangely dressed girl that somehow survived the break and showed up in their city. Freya doesn't care though. She starts cussing out the guards and trying to fight them. They take her to this council, and she's yelling and swearing at them too, and just being an overall menace. Naturally, they decide to lock her up. A girl named Auden frees Frey and brings her to a safe place. Since the break seems to have no effect on Frey, Auden wants her to go outside the city to find her dad's research. It has information on the break, and it may help them figure out how to stop it. In exchange, Auden will share some of her dad's research on the portal that brought Frey to Athia in the first place. Frey agrees, and Auden gives her some new clothes to wear so she can blend in. She refuses to put on different shoes, though. She says that her kicks have been through a lot, so they stay. These have gotten me out of a lot of scrapes. Where I go, they go. The kicks stay. Ugh. Okay, Frey. Before she leaves, she steals an apple from the sky. Girl, you have got to stop! This little girl shows her how she can leave the city, and off she goes. Pretty quickly, Frey and Cuff stumble upon some of the break zombies. Are they people? I believe this is what happens when humans are affected by the break. But I can't kill them. Funny you say that, considering this is how you act when fighting them one minute later. We got this! That's it. Ooh. Instead of finding the research, Frey finds Auden's dad himself. He seems to know about the portal that brought Frey here, but his mind has been corrupted by the break, so it's going to be hard to get information out of him. She brings him back to Sapal, but the place is under attack by Tanta Sila. Now you're probably wondering, who the heck is that? I was wondering that too, because the game takes a little too long to tell you who this is. Basically, there are these four magical ladies that rule over the land, called Tantas. I can't take that seriously, because all I think of is Tanta Kringle from Santa Claus is Coming to Town. There's the Tanta of Strength, Sila, the Tanta of Justice, Prov, the Tanta of Wisdom, Olas, and the Tanta of Love, Sinta. Apparently, they used to be good rulers that everyone loved, but then they randomly became crazy and evil and created the break. So anyway, Tanta Sila is in Sapal, and she's destroying the place and killing people. She captures Auden, and is trying to get her to admit where the demon is. And by demon, she means Frey. Frey shows up, and then Sila just runs off instead of fighting her for some reason. I thought you wanted to know where the demon was, lady. Why are you running off? Then we see the little girl that helped Frey dead on the ground, and she is really upset about this. And don't get me wrong, it's sad when a kid dies, but Frey acts like she knew this girl for a long time, when in reality, she talked to her for like five minutes. She is just torn up about her death and will keep sadly remembering her throughout the entire game. So now all the people of Sapal want Frey to kill Tanta Sila, and she agrees because she has to avenge her dear friend, the girl that she knew for five minutes. She goes to the library to get more information on the Tantas and a map to find her way to Sila's castle. The archivist gives it to her and she's really mean to Frey, but like, that's valid because Frey is a jerk to everyone. She says that she hates Tanta Sila and would love if Frey killed her, but she doesn't think she's capable of doing it. Now it's time for Frey to traverse the incredibly boring land of Athia until she makes it to Tanta Sila's castle. There's a boss fight that's really unremarkable, and Sila dies. Sila also had a cuff that gave her powers, and our cuff is able to absorb it, making Frey stronger. Then Frey gets really depressed that she killed someone. I don't know, Frey. You seemed pretty excited about killing people earlier. We got this! She makes it back to Sapal, and the archivist is there. She says that she's glad that Sila is dead, but killing her was probably a bad idea. This will definitely have consequences. What do you mean, lady? You wanted this! The whole city celebrates Sila's death, and you're forced to talk to specific NPCs, which made me think that they must have important dialogue, <laughs> but they don't. Ah, uh, the ales never tasted so good. You have my thanks, hero. Then the break spreads to half of Sapal, and the archivist is like, see, I told you bad stuff would happen. Well, maybe you should have warned me about this earlier then. Tanta Prav is upset about Sila's death, so she made the break spread as punishment. The people all want Frey to go stop her, but she's like, uh, no, I don't care about your problems. I'm not your hero. I'm not killing any more Tantas. I'm going home. She goes to Auden's dad to see if he can figure out how to send her home, but he's not doing well thanks to the whole break corruption thing. They need the sap from a very specific tree, so Frey is like, ugh, fine, I'll go find this tree and bring some back because he's my only way out of here. The whole way there, Cuff is like, you know you're these people's only hope, right? No one can go into the break but you. They're all gonna die if you don't help them. And Frey's like, too bad, I don't care. What a lovely protagonist. Once she finds the sap, some of Tanta Prav's guards try to capture her. She escapes and then comes up with a brilliant idea. So I'll ask her to stop the break and everybody wins. Yeah, Frey, that's a fantastic idea. The people of Athia should have thought of that one sooner. 
She meets with Tata Prov, and surprise, surprise, asking her to stop the break doesn't work. Frey kills her, and Cuff absorbs her powers. But right before she dies, Prov is all, Hey, you're Tanta Santa's daughter. And Frey's like, what? She heads back to Sapal, only to discover that Odin's dad is about to die. Once he passes, Frey starts to throw a fit about how she can never get home now that he's dead. Odin shows up and is like, oh, I'm so sorry that my dad's death is an inconvenience to you. Then Frey pretty much says, screw you and your people. I don't care that you're all going to die. It's not my problem. I do not care. Odin is rightfully upset by this and tells her to leave. Frey heads to the library and is like, hey, give me any information you have on the portal that brought me here. And the archivist is all, uh, I'm a bit busy trying to find a way to save our people. Perhaps you haven't noticed, but I'm sat here scrambling, trying to fix the cataclysm. So if you're not here to help, then good riddance to you. <sighs> yeah, that sounds about right. People only give a shit when they want something from you. Oh my God, she is so unlikable. The archivist says that she has no intention of helping her so she should go and take it up with her apparent mother, Tanta Sinta. Frey decides to head there, but Cuff advises her to take care of Tanta Olas first so that they can have more power to face Sinta since she's really strong. But of course, Frey refuses no matter how much Cuff pleads. Then all of a sudden, Frey's back home, but her life is way better and she's friends with all the people from Athia. Cuff eventually snaps her out of it. Apparently, Tanta Olas messed with her mind and put her in this simulation thing that shows her greatest desires. Why is the Tanta of Wisdom able to create a simulation? Also, I know that she used Frey's memories to create the illusion, but I still don't understand how this lady from a medieval world was able to perfectly recreate modern society and all of its technology to make it believable. How were you able to understand cell phones enough to do this? Frey escapes the fake world and is like, okay, we are going to go after Tanta Olas first. Oh, okay, so now that she's gone after you, you wanna take her out. It's okay to do now that she's wronged you. This character is so selfish. They make it to Tanta Olas, but she's already dead. Cuff absorbs her power and then turns into this demon thing. Gasp! He was evil the whole time! I know that they wanted this reveal to feel like the ultimate betrayal, but I was just kind of like, eh. I mean, they failed at giving Frey and Cuff a good dynamic. Half of the time she bullied him, and the other half they had really uninteresting dialogue. So anyway, Cuff used Frey to kill the Tantas and take their powers so he can do something. I think he wants to rule Athia, maybe. It's really not clear. But yeah, so it turns out that the whole time, the Tontos weren't calling Frey a demon. They were talking about Cuff. He was their real enemy, not her. Frey is now powerless without Cuff though. So she runs away and is saved by the dragon from the start. The dragon is actually her mother, Tonta Sinta. She takes Frey away and all the Tontas appear before her and say that she can save Athia. I actually believed I was a hero for a second there. You know, that I could finally fight back. But no, once again, I try to do the right thing and the rug gets pulled right from under me. Okay, whoa, 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 wait. That is not true. This entire time, you've been saying how you're not a hero, you don't care what happens to Athia, and you don't want to save them. What are you talking about, Frey? The Tantas show her what happened in the past, but not through a cutscene. That would be too entertaining. Instead, you have to look at these glass statues as dialogue plays. So basically, the Tantas used to be good and kind rulers. They were at war with these people called the Reddig, and they created the evil being that Cuff turned into. The Tantas stopped it by splitting it into four Cuffs and wearing them. But Cuff's power corrupted their minds and turned them evil. Sinta was the last to turn because she was pregnant with Frey, and this somehow allowed her to keep her sanity. Once Frey was born, she sent her through the portal so that she would be safe, but her Cuff flew off and went through it too. So that's how those two ended up in our world. Then Sinta turned into a dragon for some reason. The other Tantas just turned evil, but Sinta turned evil and became a dragon. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Also, I have several questions. If the cuff made all the Tantas turn evil, then why did they want to kill it when it arrived with Frey? Like, shouldn't they have wanted to support it? Killing the cuff is the right thing to do. And the Tantas are corrupted with cuff's power and are now like doing all the wrong evil things. I, it doesn't make sense. If they're evil and corrupted by cuff, why do they want to kill cuff? My other question is about Sinta. At the start, she tried to kill Frey. Then she saved her and for the rest of the game, she's good. So did she turn evil or not? It's really unclear. Her cuff flew off in the beginning and yet she still turned into a dragon and was evil. And now she's like wishy-washy back and forth, good and evil. I'm so confused. Anyway, they tell Frey that since she is Sinta's daughter, she is a Tanta. So she's actually had magical powers this whole time. And then she's like, oh, hey, you're right. And she just starts using magic again. Who knew it was that easy? Sinta and Frey head to Sapal. Auden is okay with Frey again for some reason. I don't know why. 
Fred gets up in front of everyone and gives a truly moving speech. I need you to rebuild. I need you to restore peace to Athia. Try and survive through this, okay? You're Athians. Cuff arrives and immediately kills Senta. So that was short-lived. Then Frey transforms into a super powerful Tanta or whatever. I don't know. I guess she got her mom's powers now. She beats Cuff in yet another unremarkable boss fight, saving all of Athia. Then there's a voiceover from Frey where she's talking to Homer as if she wrote him a letter. Oh yeah, remember Homer the cat? Of course you do. Gotta find Homer first. She says that she found somewhere she fits in and she'll come back for him one day. Then the game ends with this. That is a lot of land for just one girl to cover. But it's a good thing I'm not doing it on my own. Isn't that right, Cuff? It's fan brace. Oh, they really thought they were getting a sequel, didn't they? But that is Forspoken. <laughs> Thank God it's over. From the incredibly meh story that felt like it was written by a middle schooler, to the very unlikable fray, to the boring combat system, to the cringy dialogue, to the barren landscapes, this game was not good. But is it as bad as everyone said it was? Well, kind of. I mean, I didn't enjoy it at all. I hated Frey and the story, and the gameplay was so lame that I would get unbelievably bored. But I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting worse. With the way people were talking, I thought this was going to be the worst game I've ever experienced. But it's not. The story had potential, like it was a cool concept. And the way you can zip all over the place is fun. Um, I'm now realizing that I don't have any other positives to list. <laughs> Dang it, I was gonna try and have like a kind of positive end to this video. Okay, okay, so the point that I'm trying to make is that there was a lot of bad things in this game, but they weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be, so it was a slightly less terrible experience than I was expecting. So in conclusion, Forspoken is like this much less bad than everyone was saying it was. But yeah, that still makes it a pretty bad game, so. Don't play it. But okay, that is going to do it for me today. If there are other games, movies, anime, etc. that you want me to make a video on, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to see more content from me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! I just shut down Luminous Productions. With my freaking mom!